adaptation with artistic competence. Johan Lundblad, Tilt, Jens Tom Iversson, Rain Gothenburg and Ulrika Jansson who is an artist. The stage is yours and you have half an hour until 11. Well, thank you. Uh, I will ask Jens to share his presentation here. <coughs> well, my name is Johan Lundblad and I work as a manager at uh, TILT. TILT is an organization that works with uh, various societal issues where climate is one of these. Uh, we also have projects around integration, gender equality, elderly care and more. Uh, what's uh, special about our projects is that we always work with artists uh, as a creative engine, often in order to get the participants in the project to open up to their own cre creativity and their own cre creative ideas. Uh, I don't know what happened with the presentation here. I, can't see uh, it. I don't know what happened either. It, it disappeared. Uh, I'm trying to I read. I think it's coming back. No, it's it's not the right one. It's uh, how how do you go back a step? <laughs> uh, why is it showing? I have no idea what that one is doing. You can uh, minimize not... your Skype window. Yes, we see your screen now. Yeah. And since we see uh, your screen at your screen, it goes on forever. It goes on forever and you, you ever. Will, you will have to just take down that window. Fucking hell. It's... Because we see the same thing that you see on your own screen. Yeah. Try again, Jens. Yeah. I am. Is it? And now you don't see anything, right? No, no, we, no we see it. We saw it for just a few seconds. I know. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I will not uh, start all over again. I will just say that with me is uh, Ulrika Jansson and Jens Tom Ivason. Uh, Luke Jansson, artist, and Jens Tom Sivansson, who works as a creative um, director on the project himself in a way. Uh, the presentation uh, is gone again for me. Is it the same for everyone else? I can give it a try again. Yes, it's gone. Well, uh, I'll, I'll try then. Maybe. Because I know it will be. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Thank you, Jens. Uh, yeah. Do you want so the next slide? Your names again? Uh, could you, Jens, try to go to the next? Yeah, thank you. Because um, uh, Tilt, Rain Gothenburg, and Ulrika Jansson, we work together on a project called Cultural Adaptations. And this was a project between four countries, Sweden, Scotland, Belgium, and Ireland. And one of the aims of the project project was for artists to work in climate adaptation projects. And here in Sweden and in Gothenburg, Ulrika Jansson, the artist, worked with a housing company, Poseidon. And if you, uh, if you check this web page, you will see what happened in the other countries, but you can also take part of some toolkits about how to work with artists as, as an organization that wants to open up to creativity and new ideas in your climate projects or in any project, actually. Uh, we were planning to, to show a short film about the project, about the Swedish part of the project, but uh, as Skype is a little bit tricky about this, we, we will share I do that now in the chat. I will show, share a link to the um, to the to the film, and we will 
uh, you can all take five minutes just to take a look at this film and we will start the presentation afterwards again. We are slightly after uh, the schedule. Um, is it important that we all see the film now for the rest or can we just uh, see it uh, for ourselves afterwards? What do you think, Jensen or uh, It's. It's... Um... I think then it's better that we skip part of my presentation uh, and do the film because I think that sums up what this is about. Yeah. Okay, so I, then I, we'll I see rather... the film now and be yeah. back in five minutes. Thank you. Yes. Um, yes, I think so. Good. Uh, I will now ask uh, Ulrike to tell us a little about her work in the project and hopefully this screen sharing will work better. Um, Ulrike, are you there? Yes, I'm uh, opening up here. Okay, so uh, my camera doesn't work, so here is uh, how, how I look. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, I will try to be quite quick. Uh, and I'm a visual artist based in Göteborg, and I work with the meeting between ecology and culture within the context of specific places. Uh, I work a lot with public art commissions and in collaborative interdisciplinary projects, uh, a lot about ecological challenges. And to give an introduction to how I chose to work with the Cultural Adaptations Project, I first want to talk a bit about some of my other artworks. Uh, can I just ask if someone has their microphone on, if they can turn it off, because there's a lot of sound in the background. Thank you. So, let's see. Um, one part of my artistic work is to make physical structures in public spaces, creating meeting places for humans and animals. The sculptures offer housing for insects, bats and birds, and they work a bit like a lighthouse, throwing light at the needs of the wild beings we share our space with, as well as they are some kind of a microhabitat that calls for expansion. And working with the living in a place requires collaborations with other professions that plan and and therefore this project was very rewarding for me since I got to take part in the design of the whole place from the beginning and not only use a single part. Ulrike, I think we lost your your voice. You lost my voice? Yeah, we, we haven't heard. Now we're, we're here. You're again. back again. Yeah, you're back again. Okay, where did you miss me? Uh, <laughs> when you changed the uh, picture to this about Brahma Gordon. Okay, so again, uh, the purpose was to create a sustainable stormwater system uh, to reduce the rain load in the municipal water system and prevent flooding in a residential yard owned by Poseidon in Bremargården. And as an artist, I was invited to open up the process in the project group for adding other values to the functions. And in the end, I was part of developing the complete design for the residential yard and as well as designing two physical works of art that are activated by rainwater. Uh, I will tell you briefly about my work with the project group. Uh, I took part in all the common planning meetings in the project group for about six months. And I learned about the obstacles when it comes to cost for maintenance and technical practicalities. I also learned about the needs of the tenants from the gardening group Kolkraftverket. Um, and being a city gardener myself, I saw the potential for the garden group to take care of edible trees and bushes that would allow for a higher maintenance than is usually afforded in a residential yard. 
Uh, as you hopefully saw examples of in the video, I held workshops with different exercises on the site for the project group to use all their senses and understand the place on a deeper level. I wanted them to really experience the context of the place and make that a starting point for the new design. Uh, in connection, I introduced the concept of permaculture, which is a multifunctional design tool that by imitating how ecosystems work aims to shape human societies to contribute positively to their environment rather than just doing as little damage as possible. Uh, I also arranged a workshop where the project group were to come up with more concrete ideas about the design of the yard and collaborating groups. And I encouraged everyone to step out of their silos and aim for the better whole rather than to focusing on their particular function. Uh, and during the process, my method was to continuously show my sketches and ideas at each meeting to get feedback and to create an environment where everyone would feel comfortable feeding into the artistic sketches while I also gave input to the more technical features. I always try to work with the context of a place on many different levels and in Bremargården the Islamic garden was an inspiration with the Gothenburg mosque being the closest neighbor of the yard. The Islamic garden, the garden of paradise, is a garden for all senses where humans coexist in balance with nature and where water plays a symbolic and functional main role. And designing a modern version of the Garden of Paradise became a key idea for the overall design of the yard. Uh, I uh, specifically wanted to highlight a number of stories related to the place. And one is the raven for its connection to the nearby Ramberget, that is named after the Swedish word for raven, Ram, since it's said that there's always been living ravens there. Uh, I was inspired to bring in the raven as an aesthetic and mythic character in the design, as well as other birds as a target group. Um, and the bird population in Europe has decreased drastically the last 30 years, and therefore it's crucial to focus more on creating and preserving bird habitats in cities. Uh, Ramberget also holds the story of Peter Rambo, uh, who took his name after Ram Ramberget when he was emigrating from Sweden to America in 1650, bringing seeds from a local apple tree. The apple variety died out in Sweden but lived on in America, and it actually came to give the character Rambo his name when the playwright tasted the Rambo apple while writing the story. And we found out that the apple tree came back to Sweden in 2007 and were able to obtain a few saplings for the yard. Um, these are lead words that we uh, worked with during the design. And the, the result of the design is a sketch for a multifunctional meeting place for people, animals, and where green, blue, social and aesthetic values are connected. Um, there will be a focus on edible plants for insects, birds and humans, and perennials, shrubs and trees for birds to find food and shelter as well as being able to drink and swim in rainwater. The garden group will get larger growing boxes and there will be a meeting place with a roof with a Rambo apple tree in the middle. The rainwater from the rooftops is partly led down into rain gardens with plants and over the yard in streams to create a visual and audible effect on the sides. An overhead water spout would lead rainwater from the roofs to a rainwater fountain in a pond, where the water is collected in an underground storage connected to a hand pump for water in the garden. The fountain will collect water as a bird bath, as well as make sounds while the water travels through rain chains made of body parts of a raven and out through raven heads. In the meeting place, in the middle of the yard, the residents are protected from the weather by a large raven wing that forms a roof over a pergola. It's made out of bent sheet metal that concentrates the water and forms a rain curtain in the back. And under the pergola, there is a wooden bench with engraved image and stories that illuminate the bird's place in human nature and our place in their culture. And just quickly in the end here, um, 
when hopefully this project will be realized in the future, it has been postponed due to COVID-19, it will be a functional example for others to copy, as well as a process inspiring change in the way a residential company can work with their outdoor environment. At the same time as working with a function such as stormwater system, we can address also other social and ecological, ecological challenges that we urgently need to solve. Uh, we need to put in a bit more extra time and let more competencies have a say and really do look deep into the complexities of the place, trying to bend and challenge ordinary ways of working and maintaining a place, all the time keeping alive the vision, vision of a multifunctional place addressing more challenges than one. Thank you. Thank you, Ulrika. <clears throat> Uh, well, Jens, uh, your eight minutes is now down to four minutes. I guess you've been working very hard to to, <laughs> to rebuild your presentation during Ulrika's uh, presentation here. I think while you are talking, I will, uh, because we had planned like a, a Q&A at, at um, uh, before we end, we will not have time for this. If you have some questions for me or Jens or Ulrika, I will write my email address in the chat and you can send it to me and I will uh, give them over to, to Jens and Ulrika. Uh, please, Jens. And please put on your microphone. Yes, I just did, which meant that now I'm back into that uh, good old uh, uh, yes, otherwise I can share it. I think I... No, no, you can't. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Because I just changed it while you had your presentation. Um, yes. So, it's called Rain Gutenberg, and it's a project that is started many years ago, actually, because Gutenberg turns 400 years this year. So, that's almost already gone. So that means that whatever we are doing in our project is for the future. So Rain Gothenburg works, I mean, it won't stop raining after 2021, we assume. So we work with Rain Gothenburg with this vision that you can see here, and that is to become the best city in the world where it rains, when it rains. And I will just very quickly tell you what that means to us. We work with a design method in Rain Gothenburg, and that means that we're trying to push the city to work more creative and think more of a whole, uh, the whole perspective when doing installations in the city. Because in the end, it's for humans, we have cities. Um, and we communicate a lot with the citizens, people that are not engineers or interested in rain from the start. So that's why we use a different approach to get the attention to rain. In Gothenburg, it rains about 40% of the year. And that is something that we're trying to change into a possibility that we can use in the city. So we divided uh, our the whole approach into three different main areas. And that is from a human perspective to experience rain. What does it mean to be a human in a city when it rains? And then handling rain, how we deal with the rain when it falls on our city and hard surfaces. We, only, we have already today seen a lot of different ways of dealing with that. And that is something we all know. Most cities work with that. But it has to be also attractive in a city when it is raining for the humans. So we also add the creative method. I will really quickly go through all these three. We start with the human to see how people behave and react when it is raining. And as you can see on this picture, there's only one person you know, challenged in the rain, of course, with that T-shirt. The other ones are standing where it is dry or where it is possible to be a little bit dry. You do these very in the last minute solutions. But if you look at this kind of funny picture and start to think about how it is to experience rain in this picture, how would it sound, how would it feel to be in this party, for example, that is something that we can use. And also adding the human scale to cities, that is something that we see a lot that is lacking today, building new areas. Um, so we can work with a human scale and a more planned way of experiencing rain 
uh, or a city when it is raining and at the same time feeling safe and, and create a flow of people and adding value to a place in the city where it's placed. And if you have plenty all over the city, then the whole city will become, has a better value. Uh, handling rain, that is something that we talk about. Um, and this is, of course, you have to calculate uh, how many cubic meters of water comes in different places and so on. Um, and we, when we communicate with uh, people that are not engineers, as I said, they don't, I didn't know the difference between normal rain and cloud bursts or a hundred year event uh, when I started. And we noticed that most people don't know this. So we, we try to explain it in the best way possible. But the main thing is with how we handle the rain in cities is that we want to delay and clean it as much as possible. That's the overall or direct it in different um, uh, areas or two different areas. So, and at the same time, we want to have a more beautiful city as we already talked about earlier today. That is something Gothenburg wants too. More beautiful and functional uh, solutions to, to deal with the rain and at the same time create places where you can be when it is raining. Depending on how big area you have, you can have different sizes of solutions, of course. So that leads into the third, the creative method or the design method. Because the thing is that what we saw in the fantastic pictures from the glaciers, um, it's all about communicating. How can we get people interested in this area, in this topic, if they are not interested from the start? First of all, we take away, we have four ways of communicating. Our brain, reason, our heart, feeling, stomach, intuition, and our crouch, lust. We believe in communicating. We take away the brain for a while and start aiming at the other parts of us as humans when we communicate. So they feel something. Uh, and then we can add reason, like functions, and this is good for the environment, and all these facts. That is why we work with artists doing rain paint on the streets or poets working on the manhole lids covers to, to put the poems there to get this attention. And then uh, architects can use and, and projects can use our vision to become the best uh, city in the world when it's raining and they create this school, Torslanda Skolan, out in, in Gothenburg where they use the vision to create the world's best school when it rains. So in this school, uh, they using the rain as a feature when it is raining. They have dry places uh, for the kids and uh, the staff. And they also take care of the rainwater on their own uh, ground, um, the area where the school is. So this is the final picture. Uh, really quickly, we have an amusement park in Gothenburg called Lise Berg. They've been around for 100 years. And they started working with Christmas. And then they said, everything we do in Christmas, we should think about how it is in the summer. So that's the way we want to work in the city of Gothenburg, that if we should do a roundabout, a bus stop, a school, or a building, or whatever we do, we can stop and think that it rains about 40% of the year and how we can add values to those projects because we're doing them anyway. Thank you. Well, that will be all from us. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and sorry for the te technical issues. Well, thank you.